Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineered Math Channel. Sa video na to ay magre-review tayo for college entrance exam mathematics. So kung gusto nyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so this time ay magre-review ulit tayo for college entrance exam mathematics which is part 12. So, pwede nyo itong magamit kapag magkitake kayo ng entrance exam for UPCAT, PUPSET, ASET, DCAT, USET, etc. So, aside dito sa playlist ko for college entrance exam at reviewers, ay meron din akong separate playlist for specific branch ng mathematics like algebra, geometry, analytic geometry, trigonometry, etc. na pwede nyo rin panoorin for more detailed information sa bawat topics na i-discuss sa bawat branch ng math na yan. So, ililink ko na lang din yung mga playlist para ma-check nyo. So, magsasagot ulit tayo ng sets of questions. So, sa part 11 ay nagtapos tayo sa item 110. So, let's start with item 111. So, in the figure below, AB is an arc of a circle with center O. If the length of arc AB is 13 pi over 2 and the length of CB is 8, what is the area of shaded region? Okay, so ito yung figure natin. So, ang given natin is yung length daw ng arc AB, this arc, is equal to 13 pi over 2. And then, yung length ng CB, this length is 8. What is the area daw ng shaded region, or itong color green? So, mapapansin nyo, itong figure natin is a quarter circle. Kasi mayroon siyang 90 degree angle sa center, right? So, ibig sabihin, kung mayroon tayong whole circle, dinivide yung circle into four equal parts. So, this is 90 degree, right? So, itong portion na to yung kinoconsider natin. So, therefore, para makuha natin itong shaded region, pwede nating maging formula is area of shaded is equal to area nitong kabu ang quarter circle So, ibig sabihin, 1 fourth nung area nung whole circle, which is ang formula natin, is pi r squared, right? Then, ima-minus natin this time itong figure natin na square, right? Kasi apat na 90 degree angle and then congruent yung mga side. So, therefore, formula ng area ng square is simply s square. So, in this case, yung s square natin is itong OC, right? So, para makuha natin yung area ng shaded region, dapat alam natin yung radius at yung length ng side ng square S o itong OC. So, paano? So, base dito sa given, ang given kasi is itong length ng arc AB. So, since kapag arc ang kinoconsider natin sa circle, ang formula na ginagamit natin is circumference, right? So, ang formula natin for circumference is 2 pi r. But since quarter circle nga lang tayo, i-divide din natin ito by 4. Tapos, i-equate natin sa given value, which is itong 13 pi over 2. So, pwede natin masolve si r. So, cancel si pi. So, we have 13 over 2 is equal to 2r over 4 or r over 2, right? Simplify 2 over 4 as 1 half. So, cross-multiply ko na lang si 2. So, magiging 2 times 13 divided by 2 equals r. Or cancel na si 2, 13 is equal to R. So, therefore, yung radius natin is R. So, masasolve na natin itong formula na to. So, paano naman natin makukuha yung length ng side? S. So, di ba, given tayo na itong CB is 8. Ang gusto, na, ang gusto natin makuha is itong OC or yung side S. So, since alam natin na itong OB from this center is the radius. So, ito rin, radius din itong OA. Saka ito. So, pwede natin gamitin yung formula na yung radius R is equal to etong S, which is yung OC, plus etong CB, right? Which is 8. So, substituting the value of R na nakuha natin, 13 is equal to S unknown plus yung CB natin na 8. So, therefore, transpose si 8, 13 minus 8 is equal to S, or S is equal to 13 minus 8 or 5. So, kung pwede na tayo, pwede na natin makuha yung area ng shaded. So, area of shaded is equal to 1 fourth pi. So, R natin is 13, right? Then, squared minus S squared. So, S natin is 5, 5 squared. So, we have 1 fourth pi. 13 squared is what? 
169 minus 5 squared is 25. So therefore, we have 169 pi over 4 minus 25. So therefore, ito yung area ng shaded region. So the answer is... Okay, wala sa choices. I think letter C yung sagot. So it should be 169 pi over 4 minus 25. So nagkamali lang siguro ako nang nasulat sa choices. Okay? Pero ang sagot dapat is 169 pi over 4 minus 25. Okay? Next we have the angles of a triangle are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3. Find the measure of the largest angle. Okay, so let's say meron tayong triangle. So yung ratio daw nung angles natin ito sa triangle, let's say itong angle na to is 1 is to 2 is to 3. Okay? So ano raw yung measure nung largest angle? So di ba alam natin na yung sum nung measure nung triangle is 180 degree. So kapag meron tayong given ratio, pwede natin munang i-multiply sila lahat sa x and then hahanapin natin yung value ng x. So we have 1 times x is x is 2, 2 times x, 2x is 2, 3 times x, 3x. And then dahil yung sum ng angles nga natin is 180 degree, pwede natin silang i-sum up din. So x plus 2x plus 3x equal din dapat sa 180 degree. Solve ngayon natin itong x. So, x plus 2x plus 3x is 6x equals 180. Divide both sides by 6. x is equal to 180 divided by 6 or 30. So, ngayon, base dito sa ratio natin, ang hinahanap is yung largest angle. So, obviously, alin dito yung largest angle? x, 2x, or 3x? Siyempre, yung may pinakamalaking number na nakamultiply sa x. So, 3x. So, multiply natin yung x by 3. Nakuha natin x is 30. 3 times 30 is 90 degree. So, the largest angle is 90 degree. Letter B. Okay? Next, we have given the figure below. If DE is parallel to BC, find EC. Okay, so meron tayong triangle ABC. So, sabi... Ito raw DE is parallel dito sa BC. So, DE is parallel to BC. So, ano raw yung length nitong EC? So, meron kasi tayong tinatawag dito na side splitter theorem. Kung saan, kung meron tayong triangle at kung meron tayong segment or line na nagpa-pass through dito sa dalawang sides ng triangle na parallel sa third side, so meaning itong DE, nag-intersect at point D at E right, and then parallel dito sa BC, then magkakaroon tayo ng proportional segments. So, ano yung mga proportional segments na yun? So, itong AD over DB is equal sa ratio nitong AE over EC. So, since given naman yung AD na 6, yung DB na 9, at yung AE na 5, pwede nating masolve si EC. Substitute natin, AD is 6 over DB is 9 equals AE is 5 over EC. So, cross multiplication na lang. So, cross multiply ko si EC sa taas, cross multiply ko si 9 sa taas, then cross multiply ko si 6 pa baba. So, magiging EC is equal to 5 times 9 divided by 6. So, EC will be 5 times 9 is 45 divided by 6. Or in decimal, it is equal to 7.5. Right? So, therefore, the answer is letter B. Next, we have, if the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle is 10, what is the length of one leg? Okay, so meron daw tayong isosceles right triangle. So, meaning meron tayong 90 degree angle dito. And then, meron tayong 45 degree, 45 degree, and then congruent itong dalawang legs. So, ang given natin is yung length nung hypotenuse which is 10. So, actually, meron tayong theorem dito yung 45, 45, 90 special triangle. That is, if you are given one leg of the isosceles right triangle, the hypotenuse is simply square root of 2 times the measure of any leg. So, kung ililet natin na yung dalawang legs is x kasi equal naman sila, by 45, 45, 90 triangle theorem, so dapat yung hypotenuse natin, which is given as 10, is equal to square root of 2 times any leg, which is x. 
So dividing both sides by square root of 2, we have x is equal to 10 over square root of 2. Or rationalize natin kasi meron tayong uh, square root sa denominator. So multiply natin sa square root of 2 over square root of 2. So we have 10 times square root of 2 over square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 2 quantity squared or 2 equals x. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we have 5 square root of 2 is equal to x. So therefore, yung leg natin is 5 square root of 2. Or pwede rin namang Pythagorean theorem. So apply nyo yung sum ng squares ng legs is equal to square ng hypotenuse. So we have x square plus x square is equal to 10 square. Right? So 2x square is equal to 10 square is 100. Divide both sides by 2. We have x squared is 50. Then, square root both sides, we have x is equal to square root of 50 is the same as square root of 25 times 2. And then, pwede natin paghiwalayin na square root of 25 times square root of 2. But square root of 25 is 5. So, we have 5 square root of 2. So, same lang, right? So, the answer is letter B. Next, we have find the value of x. Okay, so meron tayong given figure. So, meron tayong dalawang intersecting lines, right? Tapos, itong angle na to is 7x plus 54. And this angle is 3x plus 90. So, hanapin daw natin yung value ng x. So, para natin isasolve yung x. So, apply natin yung concept na kapag meron tayong dalawang intersecting lines tulad nito, meron tayong mabubuong dalawang pairs of vertical angles. So, ano yung dalawang pairs of vertical angles natin? So, una... Itong angle natin na to, yung given 7x plus 54 at itong given angle na 3x plus 90. And then yung another pair is itong angle tsaka itong angle na yon. So pag vertical angles, ibig sabihin meron tayong pairs of angles na na-form from two intersecting lines kung saan hindi sila adjacent at hindi nagpo-form ng linear pair. At yung theorem natin is vertical angles theorem are always congruent. So, therefore, pwede natin i-equate yung dalawang values nitong vertical angles natin. Itong 7x plus 54. So, 7x plus 54 dapat equal dito sa 3x plus 90. Kasi vertical angle sila. So, solve lang natin itong equation. So, transpose ko si 3x, transpose ko si 54. So, 7x minus 3x is equal to 90 minus 54. 7x minus 3x is 4x equals 90 minus 54 is 36. Dividing both sides by 4, we have x is equal to 36 divided by 4 or 9. So therefore, the answer is letter A. Okay. Next, we have find the equation of the line containing the point 2 comma negative 3 and has slope 1. Okay, so equation of a line. So, ang given natin is a point and the slope. So, pwede natin gamitin yung point slope form of a line. Which is, yung formula natin is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. Where yung m is yung slope at yung x sub 1 comma y sub 1 is yung given point. So, pag sinapsitit natin yung value, we have y minus y sub 1 yung y coordinate sa given point which is negative 3 equals m which is yung slope natin sa given is 1, times x minus x sub 1, yung x coordinate sa given point na 2. So, simplifying further, we have y minus negative 3 is y plus 3 equals 1 times x minus 2 is simply x minus 2. So, sa choices, nakasolve si y, right? So, transpose lang natin itong 3. Sa right, magiging y is equal to x minus 2 minus 3. Or y is equal to x Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. So, therefore, the equation of the line is y is equal to x minus 5. Letter A. Okay. Next, we have find the value of k such that the line kx plus 3y equals 5 is perpendicular to the line x minus 2y plus 6 equals 0. Okay. So, hanapin daw natin yung value ng k para yung equation ng line na kx plus 3y equals 5 is perpendicular dito sa line na may equation na x minus 2y plus 6 equals 0. So, given equations of a line, 
para masabing perpendicular yung dalawang lines, dapat yung product ng slopes nila is equal to negative 1. So, pwede natin gawin is hanapin natin yung value ng slopes ng bawat line by transforming the equation given dun sa mga line into slope intercept form, which is y is equal to mx plus b. So, yung m, yung slope, tapos yung b, yung y-intercept. So, sige, hanapin natin yung slope ng bawat line. So, dito muna tayo sa kx plus 3y equals 5. So, solve natin in this form. So, isolate ko si 3y sa left sa so, magiging 5. Transpose ko dito si kx sa right sa so, negative kx plus 5. So, para y lang yung nasa left side, divide natin both sides by 3. So, therefore, y is equal to, distribute ko si 3, so, negative k over 3x plus 5 over 3. So, dito sa line natin na to, ang ating m is itong negative k over 3 at yung b natin is 5 over 3. So, let's say slope m sub 1 to. Ganun din, gamitin din natin yung slope intercept form dito sa x minus 2y plus 6 equal 0 para mahanap natin yung slope. So, isolate ko si negative 2y sa left. Transpose ko si x sa right, so negative 6, saka si positive 6, negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 2 to solve for y. We have distribute si negative 2 sa denominator, so negative x over negative 2 minus 6 over negative 2. Or negative x over negative 2 is x over 2, then negative 6 over negative 2 is positive 6 divided by 2 is 3. So therefore dito, yung slope natin is... Uh, 1 half right kasi may invisible 1 dito and then yung B natin is 3 so let's say M sub 2 natin to so basta sa sinabi ko yung concept na kapag perpendicular yung dalawang lines dapat yung product ng slopes nila is negative 1 so multiply natin so M1 times M2 is equal to negative 1 so since sa M1 natin ang value ng slope is negative K over 3 times yung M2 naman is 1 half equal to negative 1. So, solve natin tong equation for k. So, negative k over 3 times 2 is 6, right? Equals negative 1. So, cross multiply ko si 6. So, negative k is equal to negative 1 times 6 or negative k is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 1. Therefore, k is equal to negative 6 divided by negative 1 or positive 6. So, therefore, the value of k should be 6. Letter C. Okay. Next, we have what is the center of a circle with the equation x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 10y plus 4 equals 0. Okay. So, hanapin daw natin yung center ng uh, circle with the equation na to. So, para magawa yun, kailangan natin i-transform itong given equation ng circle into center radius form. So, yung center radius form is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. Where yung h comma k is the center and r is the radius. So, magagawa natin to by completing the square dito sa x at y nitong given equation. Supply natin. So, copy ko muna dito. So, igugroup ko yung may mga x variable. So, x squared, tsaka negative 4x. Mag-iiwan tayo ng blank para dun sa term na i-add natin sa x para makomplete yung square. Plus, y squared. Then, i-combine ko siya dito sa negative 10y. Yung lahat ng may mga y. Then, maglilip din ako ng plus blank para sa term na i-add sa y para makomplete yung square. Then, tatanspose ko tong constant sa right side. sa so, magiging negative 4. So, dito muna tayo sa x. So, paano makukomplete yung square ni x? So, mag a tayo ng term at yung term na yun is yung numerical coefficient ng x which is negative 4. Divide natin sa 2. So, it is negative 2, right? Then, square natin. It is positive 4. So, mag a tayo ng 4. Then, pag nag a tayo ng 4 sa left, dapat sa right din para balance. Then, ganun din sa y. This time, yung numerical coefficient ng y na negative 10. Divide natin sa 2. It is negative 5, right? Then, square. It is 25. So, therefore, mag a tayo ng 25 sa left para makomplete yung square ni y. Then, ganun din sa right. So, ngayon, pwede na natin i-factor to. So, pa-factor natin to as x minus 2 
quantity squared plus ito naman sa y, y minus 5 quantity squared equals sa right, negative 4 plus 4 plus 25 is simply 25. So, therefore, yung center natin is itong 2 tsaka 5, right? So, h comma k is 2 comma 5. Tapos, yung radius natin is, di ba itong 25 is naka-equate siya sa r squared? So, squared both sides r is 5. So, therefore, ang required sa problem is yung center na 2 comma 5. So, the answer is A. Okay? Next, we have find the area of a trapezoid with two bases measuring 2 cm and 5 cm and with height equal to 7 cm. So, finding the area of a trapezoid. So, sige, draw muna tayo ng trapezoid. So, let's say, itong trapezoid natin, yung base natin is yung dalawang sides na parallel. So, let's say, ito yung B1, which is yung mas maliit na base, itong 2 cm na given. And then, itong... Base 2, which is itong given na 5 cm. So, dapat parallel sila ang dalawa. Okay? And then, yung height daw natin na given is itong 7 cm. So, height H is 7 cm. So, anong area ng trapezoid? So, may formula tayo sa area ng trapezoid as area A is equal to 1 half times height times the sum of the two bases. So, plug in lang natin yung values. 1 half times H which is 7 cm times B1 plus B2. So, B1 is 2 cm plus B2 is 5 cm. So, we have 1 half times 7 cm times 2 cm plus 5 cm is 7 cm. So, multiply natin yung mga constant. 1 half times 7 times 7 is 49 over 2 or 24.5 square cm. Right? So, the answer is letter A. Next, we have the midline of the triangle is 8. Find the length of the side parallel to the midline. Okay. So, midline of the triangle. So, let's say meron tayong triangle dito. So, triangle A, B, C. So, ano ba ninatawag nating midline? So, yung midline is yung segment from the two midpoints of two sides of the triangle na parallel din sa third side. So, let's say, mag-draw tayo ng midpoint dito sa side A, B as D. At midpoint dito sa side B, C as F. So, since this is the midpoint of A, B, then A, D is congruent to D, B. And since F is the midpoint of B, C, B, F is congruent to F, C. And then, pag din natin yung segment from these two midpoints, so, itong D, F natin is called the midline. So, dapat parallel siya dito sa third side na AC. So, ano yung formula natin para mahanap yung midline? Meron tayong relationship na yung length ng midline DF is 1 half the length of the third side na parallel dun sa midline. Itong AC yon right? So, 1 half AC. So, ang given natin is yung length ng midline, which is 8 substitute natin. So, yung hinahanap is yung length ng third side na parallel sa midline, which is itong AC. So, 8 is equal to 1 half AC. So, solve ngayon natin tong AC. So, cross multiply ko lang tong 2. So, we have 8 times 2 is equal to AC. Or AC is 16. Right? So, therefore, the length of the third side is 16. Letter B. Okay? Okay, so I think that's it for this video. College Entrance Exam Math Reviewer Part 12. So, abangan nyo na lang yung next upload ko for College Entrance Exam Math Review which is Part 13. So, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panonood.